anyone who's been on the internet for longer than, say, a day could probably tell you that GIFs or GIFs or let's just say GIF files are pretty cool. They can be used to enhance an article or a blog post or Twitter post or anything like that with a little bit more flair than a picture, but a little bit less than a video just for a nice bite-sized piece of content. To establish a company and to do it well, the first thing you need to do is to make a good product. What's going on guys, Some Killer Tofu here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take a simple animated file like this and turn it into something a little more complicated and composited like this. But first things first, if you're new to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and also the bell to notify you for any future videos I may do on any gaming content, movie reviews, tutorials, vlogs, or anything of that nature. Anyway, let's get right on to it. But I know what you're thinking to yourself. But Chris, you don't have very many subscribers. Why would you share a secret that got you 1800 plus karma and upvotes on Reddit when that just means anybody else can do this and you might not necessarily have your special thing anymore. Well, there's multiple reasons for that. First, I think it's fun. I like doing it and I thought maybe other people would like doing that too. It's a good time kill and it allows me to kind of express myself as far as certain cultures and fandoms I'm a part of. Second, it might make for better memes, which is always a good thing. I mean, memes have kind of gotten stale with all the photo copying and stuff like that. And if people put a little more effort in, I think the quality and entertainment experience of it could be better as a whole. Lastly, with the lack of subscribers, I kind of just think that maybe I could be guiding others to a treasure I cannot possess. Okay, so first things first, um, and this will be pretty much the same across the board, but the first thing you're going to want to do when you're creating content like this is to find your materials, your, um, your images and animated clips and stuff like that. Um, the way I like to do it personally is I like to pick one clip to be like a frame basically um like for example let's say simpsons watching tv actually i don't really need that to be bad it can just be a picture um the first way i'm gonna teach you is like with the static image for the frame just because it's a little easier like let's say i wanted to use this picture of bart so I would just go ahead and say, or this one of Homer, Lisa, and Bart. I would just go ahead and save that picture, which I think I have saved that one at some point for this. Um, that's not what I'm going to use at this point, but I just figured it would be a good example to kind of show you my thought process. So usually I find a picture where somebody's watching TV or on a computer or something that can be used as a frame for something going on in the background. And then I, at that point, go to... YouTube to find what I would want to put inside of that um, frame, inside of that image. It doesn't really matter what you can, uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it does matter what in terms of success or popularity of content. You definitely want to try to go for something that's somewhat related. Like everything that I've done with video games, I've tried to make video game related. Um, there was one time I, I used a clip of Funhouse, who's one of my favorite YouTube channels, um, with the Yakuza meme or whatever that I, I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial, and it didn't really go over well, just because I guess a lot of their fans don't really know that game series, even though they've had two videos on it in the past. Um, so you definitely want to try to, if you're going to put it on Reddit or something like that, try to have stuff that's related. Um, because it usually goes over better. So I've been doing a lot of creator-based frames and clips, or like show frames and clips, or at least shows that are from the same time period or something that people can relate to. Um, but then you're gonna wanna download it from whatever your source that you use to download videos is. I know that's not you know necessarily the most copyright friendly, 
but usually when it's like fan art or something like that you can usually get a pass for some of this stuff because the creators usually like it when it's like youtube creators um obviously bigger ips it's a little more iffy um so yeah you download your video here and then you go into photoshop so basically i have this image of majima from yakuza um already kind of cut out from the way I found the format or whatever. You're gonna go layer from background by right clicking on the layer down here to the right and uh, just make a layer from background. That way it doesn't have everything locked into place and you can kind of edit it more freely. Sometimes with it being locked in background mode, it's a little tough. Um, now, <clears throat> what I like to do personally is instead of going with this weird goopy looking image, I try to clean it up a bit um, when I can. So we're gonna take the pen tool here, zoom in a bit by holding Alt and scrolling in with the mouse wheel, and we're just gonna draw points. And it's not gonna be perfect. You know, this this is kind of a situation where you can be like Bob Ross. There, there's no accidents, just happy mistakes or whatever or whatever he said no mistakes just happy accidents just try and be you know relatively clean as much as you can for the best effect Now that that's complete, since we don't have that background lock, we can just go to paths here so that it shows the work path. As you can see, there's like this little highlighted area in gray down here. Um, from there, you right click the work path, make selection, and that'll just turn it into a selected area that you can then delete from the image. Um, let's see what else I want to do or show you to do here just to make it a little cleaner. What you're going to do is come over here and grab your clone stamp tool and then you're just going to alt click to select an area and then you can kind of go in and fill in spots that got kind of messed up with the way that that person cut it out messily on the phone from what I remember in the group post. And with this cloning tool, you can kind of fake the edges back into place a bit. Again, not perfect, but it works most of the time. Yeah. And then we're probably going to even just go back and with the eraser tool, just kind of erase this edge that I kind of added on on accident. Um, let's do just a tiny bit more clone stamp tool. And it might look a little weird um, right now, just because, it, like, yeah, it's gonna kind of be bubbly because you got this circular brush. But when you and like it's you know clone, so it's all <laughs> kind of weirdly blurry in certain spots. But really, once you um, zoom out, no one's gonna notice all that much unless they're really trying to look for something wrong. And then on top of that, once you have the animation in there, it's really going to be harder to really pay attention to that. Again, not perfect, just trying to make it look better than having these weird white splotches, if you can avoid it. So what I'll probably do is just go back in and erase a little bit more, just to clean up the line. Oh shit. <laughs> Control Z is your friend. Okay, good enough for now. So now that we've got our base layer, I guess it's really not a base layer because it's on top of everything else the way I do it. But anyway, now that we've got that, what we're gonna do is then go in and go to File, Import Video Frames to Layers. And you're going to go to your, I think I have it in two, but go to wherever your video file is for this. And what it's gonna have you do is you're gonna have to actually select the um, 
frames you're wanting to use. And just for the sake of this video, I'll try and recreate to the best of my abilities what I did before. But what we're going to do is from this point, we're going to actually select all of these. It doesn't really matter what frame it's on in the timeline, um, but we're going to link them, which is very important. Always right click and link your layers if you're doing this for like animated file or whatever. Uh, you're going to copy those, bring them into your other tab where you have the frame or however you want to do this and then paste them. Um, now what I like to do right off the bat is bring, click and drag your overlay layer or whatever and bring it up to the top. That way all of your video clip frames are basically below it. Just makes it a little easier to get the framing right. Um, as you can see here. Now, since those are all linked, I can change one. It's going to change all of them, or it should, unless it screws up for some reason. Um, so that like I can just set this up completely on its own. I really should have held shift. If you don't hold shift, it doesn't do it evenly. <laughs> kind of important if you're wanting it to be realistic at all and not look ridiculously distorted. And then you're gonna just kind of bring it Oops. Uh, okay, what we're gonna do then is, yeah, it's gonna keep doing that. So we're gonna, instead of using the mouse, we're going to hold shift and use the arrow keys. This will move it at five pixels at a time, I think, and you can just actually hold it and it'll do it over time. Um, if you tap an arrow key without the shift key, it actually only moves it one pixel at a time, which makes it incredibly tedious. Um, but yeah, now that I've got it to where I can actually hold it, let's just move it like that instead. I'm gonna shrink it down a little more, I think. Bring it up. We're gonna rotate it here in a second. Go into the corner. I kind of want it to show white on both the top and bottom to kind of have it be fairly even. Again, doesn't have to be entirely perfect, but what you're going to go for somewhat is realism, or I try to at least. So after we've done this, uh, let's just go ahead and accept the changes for now where it's at. And then we're going to go into edit, transform, and do some perspective alignment here. Um, now what I do usually is I try to shift this up a bit on this corner as well as down this way if I can. Usually you can only do one way or the other so I'm probably going to have to go back into uh, let's see if we can adjust it. I'm going to see based on the TV I guess it would be more like that. You just want it to kind of look like it's it would actually be viewed that way, if that makes sense. Um, actually, let's go in and do just a little more. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And what we're going to do is go in and just transform scale again, but this time we're going to um, we're actually going to not do it equally. Like we're not going to hold shift. We're just going to do that and a little more actually just to clear out that corner now that we've got that what you're gonna do is um, actually highlight all of the frames or all the layers excuse me now you're gonna want to click create frame animation in the bottom timeline window and then select all of your layers right click and select make frames from layers so you're gonna want to have basically all your frames and layers or whatever, layers as frames rather, but you're gonna wanna have your um, frame, that's a bad word to use for this, but it's the only thing I can think of, your like TV frame or whatever, your bevel, whatever you wanna think of it as, um, 
and you're going to want to go click this little hamburger button or whatever you call it, the lines, horizontal lines button, and you're going to go match layer across frames. Make sure to select that layer before you do that, which will then copy that over every single frame you have in your animation. So now that I have that, I'm going to delete this frame using the trash can icon over here. And we're going to go back to the beginning and let's see our, how our work turned out. So basically you click the play button and it's going to be slow um, just because it's running through every single frame letting you see exactly what it's doing. Um, this is just to kind of give you a an idea, um, kind of like an, a preview, an example. But it's not that bad. So what we're going to do is then go to that sideways button before you, you can't really save as a an animation file from what I've seen you have to convert to video timeline and then if you play it actually goes a little smoother it's still not as smooth as it does when it's finished but it looks better um, then lastly what you're gonna do is go up to file export save for web it's a little big on the like image size. I might shrink it down just a hair, just to make it, not, well, it's not even really that big of a file. It's probably fine. So let's go ahead and save. Um, because it's a picture with a video inside of it, it's kind of on the smaller end for the stuff I've been making lately. Um, we're gonna call this, well, first off, let's go up a bit, go to composite tutorial tutorial one and you have to make sure when you're saving it it's listed as images only in the file type um, and your everything here should be fine by default from what I've seen I've never really had to change anything besides the size over on the right side if it was a little too big of a file um, but now that we've got that open this tutorial one with photos because otherwise it'll just open right back in Photoshop which we don't want And as you can see, it's running really smoothly now, like a video. Um, so yeah, that's how I do those for the picture with the animation inside of it ones. Um, that's how I, you know, started out. But now I've actually gone in to where I've started doing ones that have video in video, if that makes sense. Um, I did one here for the YouTuber Indie Mouse. So I've set it up so that Basically, as you can see, there's going to be a video frame with a video inside of the frame, like this. Now, in retrospect, I wish I could have had a better video clip to use for the inside the frame, um, but I couldn't really get it to work properly, and I'll show you why um, here in just a second, because doing videos together um, like this is a little tougher, it's trickier, because what you have to worry about is matching the amount of frames in each group. Because when I do videos, I like to group them by holding Control and G on all the layers. Um, like as you can see, this one's all of the frame layers. There's 399 of them, <laughs> which got a bit tricky. And then on the clip inside, there were also 399 by the time I cut it down because most of these videos obviously have thousands and thousands of frames. Um, well, what you need to do is, from what I've done at least, is do your frame like I did before. I have these little, um, these little bevel kind of images just to kind of make it a little more evened out with the video um, so that I don't have to cut out too much with the video. So yeah, make your frames uh, clips to get your idea of how many frames, you, that's a terrible way to word that, get your border images to see how many frames you're going to be working with, then trim down your clip for your main inside clip to the same amount of frames, do all the same stuff I did before like perspective and um, scale, and then you can just, once you've deleted out the um, frame yes for every single or the, the the background for every single image it kind of sucks but it's necessary if you want to do it right um then you just do
do the same thing. You make a frame animation for your um, one thing and one tab, basically. Like I, I did the video background, I want to say here, in this first one that I showed you the video of. Um, this is where I did my background section here, or whatever, foreground, whatever you want to call it. And then in this other one, I started out as having 399 here, but I think I ended up redoing it. But, so basically I did each animation in their own tab and then copied over as a group the video clip like this over into this one and then did all my manipulation to make it fit into the frame correctly. Um, I know that's a very brief glossing over the video one, but it took so long compared to the photo one that I just don't know if we have time to really cover that right now in great length and detail. So I kind of just gave you a quick run through of my thought process in doing that. Um, but yeah, this was very complicated and something entirely new to me. So, um, you know, if you liked this, feel free to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment letting me know if there's anything else you would like me to try to explain for my editing process, whether in video or photos or um, animated images like this. I'll be happy to answer any questions or things like that to the best of my abilities um, in the comments below. But thank you for your time, and this is Some Killer Tofu signing off. See you next time. Bye.